Well, first of all, I want to apologize Ron Paustin from Germany, who wanted to represent the initiative Inclusion Muss Laut Sein. Inclusion must be noisy. He got ill and had to cancel his trip last minute. Sorry about that. Thus, we thought that we have only one speaker this afternoon, Paul Richards, United Kingdom, talking about an initiative called Stay Up Late. But now we learned that we have another speaker. It's Klaus Kondusi, representing Atempo, a social enterprise in Graz, Austria. Well, first, I suggest that we shortly introduce ourselves. I'm a human rights lawyer from Germany and president of Inclusion International and secretary general of the International Disability Alliance. And I worked for persons with intellectual disabilities and families now for nearly 40 years. Now it's your turn. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Klaus Kandussi. I'm representing the organization Atempo, as Klaus Lachwitz already said. You might have um, heard from Atempo in the other sessions here because Capito, the easy to read unit, is one part of uh, our organization. And uh, this afternoon I will um, present you our um, newest IT baby, a platform for assistance. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Paul Richards and I'm the, the director of uh, the, the charity Stay Up Late. We're based in the UK. Okay, we have three statements and we hope that we will have enough time then for questions and short discussions. Well, let me start with some basic remarks and uh, information on peer support, peer counseling and best buddies. And, well, all of us know that we can support persons with disabilities in different ways. But what is peer support? We talk about peer support when the support is given by a peer, that is to say by a person who is similar in fundamental ways to the beneficiary of the support. In other words, their relationship is one of equality. One example, a person with intellectual disabilities who has learned to speak up as a self-advocate supports another person with intellectual disabilities to become a self-advocate by reporting about his or her development based on personal experiences and by trying to empower the person with intellectual disability to express his requests for autonomy and independence. Peer support appears in different forms. It can be provided by peers without training or by trained peer support workers, even by peer support specialists. With regard to persons with disabilities, peer support was originally developed in the United States of America based on the independent living movement. The term peer support is mentioned but not defined in Article 26 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which deals with habilitation and rehabilitation. I quote, states parties shall take effective and appropriate measures, including through peer support, to enable persons with disabilities to attain and maintain maximum independence, full physical, mental, social and vocational ability, and full inclusion and participation in all aspects of life, all aspects of life. I gather from this text that according to the convention, Peer support includes a very broad range of activities and services. Peer counseling is a method to advise a person with disability or chronic illness how to reach such a level of autonomy and independence. Again, it can be offered by untrained or trained peers, experienced staff or even experts. 
bodies are friends, Pauls, mates, close colleagues, etc., the term body is broader than the term peer, as it includes persons whose appearance and experience in life might be different, but who want to support a person to lead a happy and satisfying life. In the field of intellectual disability, the association Best Bodies International is quite famous and fairly widespread. I quote from their website, Best Bodies International is a global volunteer movement founded by Anthony Shriver. It has grown from one original chapter at Georgetown, United States of America, to more than 2,300 chapters worldwide, positively impacting the lives of over one million people with or without intellectual disability. Best Bodies offer international programs in over 50 countries worldwide, based on its friendship, jobs, and leadership development mission. It's in particular successful by helping persons with intellectual disabilities to receive vocational training and to get employed at the open labor market. The group to be represented by Ron Postian, who has to be cancelled, Inclusion Must Be Noisy, who unfortunately, well, is not here, is a local initiative based in Hamburg, Germany, consisting of buddies who join with persons with disabilities to arrange leisure time activities. Well, to visit concerts, for instance, to plan events, etc. You find a, a statement of a person with a disability sitting in a wheelchair in our Zero Project Report 2018, with a headline, I can still enjoy my passion for heavy metal music, even if the festival is held in the mud of the fields around Wacken, which is a small but very famous village in Germany because of a huge rock festival. Well, I want to finish up with an example from Australia. We have a new member now within Inclusion International. It's called Inclusion Australia. And they are advocating quite frequently for changes in law to receive inclusion and participation of all persons with disabilities. And they are doing that by including many, many self-advocates in their organization. And these self-advocates speak up now everywhere in Australia to convince government people, official stakeholders, etc., etc., that the law must be changed, it must be adapted in order to implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Thank you. Now I refer to you. Hello, can you hear me? Right. Hello, I'm, um, I'm Paul Richards. I'm the, um, the director of the charity Stay Up Late, based in Brighton in the UK. And I'm going to be talking to you. Uh, we've heard a lot of, um, over the last day and a half of, of high-tech IT solutions. I'm going to be talking about a low-tech, people-based solution to support people with intellectual disabilities to um, be included in mainstream cultural life. So, quick bit of background. I was, the, I was a support worker. I was also the bass player in this punk band called Heavy Load. And three of the members of the band had learning disabilities. And we, we uh, played for 15 years. We used to play all over the UK. We played in America, in Germany, Denmark. And a film was made about us, Heavy Load, it was called. And one of the stories in the film was how we would get fed up as a band of seeing our fans have to leave our gigs at nine o'clock because their support staff couldn't work late. So we started this campaign called Stay Up Late, and it's now turned into a charity. This is one of our, our leaflets. Imagine if you had to leave every night out at half past nine, which 
sadly is the reality for many people with intellectual disabilities if they manage to get out at all. And for us as a charity, um, the, the, the right to go out and spend your time as an adult as you want is a basic human right. Adults should not have bedtimes, they're for children. And they don't even observe them either. And we believe as well that if, if you don't get a chance to choose your bedtime, it's probably symptomatic that there's other choices in your life being denied you as well. So we, we came up with this project. We also campaign about inflexible support systems, but we came up with this project five years ago called Gig Buddies. And what it simply does is it matches up socially isolated people with learning, intellectual disabilities and or autism with a volunteer buddy who shares the same cultural interests, whether that's music, theater, football, uh, walking, what, whatever it is, whatever your gig is, we'll try and find a volunteer to support you to live your life how you want. And it's built, the project's built on four key principles. It is about meaningful community participation. It's led by people with intellectual disabilities. It's about accessing mainstream culture. And ultimately, it's about friendships. So what we've, what we've done with uh, Gig Buddies, it, it's a win-win situation, really, because what we're doing is we're saying to people who are volunteers, you, you, you enjoy going out to gigs anyway, so why not support somebody to enjoy that, that time with you? So it's turning an existing opportunity into a, a volunteering opportunity. And we believe there's three reasons why people don't volunteer. Uh, they don't know what to do, they don't have the time, or they just don't want to. Well, we think with our project, we've found a way of addressing those people who don't know what to do and don't think they've got the time, just by turning what they do already into a volunteering opportunity. And obviously, we are working with uh, people who are at risk from, from potential abuse. So we, uh, we vet people, we do police checks, we, we train them, we give them ongoing support. And we also go through quite an involved process around matching because that relies on things like people, not only what music are they into or what cultural interests, but their sexuality, their gender, their age, their location, things like that. So what we've done around this is, is our high tech solution. We've developed this molecular supercomputer called Kate. Kate, do you want to just, hello, there's Kate. So it's Kate's job. She, she deals with all the human relationship side of things and does all of that complicated matching thing. Before we started the project, we wanted to find out what the picture was of why people weren't getting out in the evening. For us, accessibility is not just about physical and sensory barriers. There's all these other things that people with intellectual disabilities face. Not having enough support, being worried about being safe in the community in the evening, not having adequate access to public transport, um, and mental health issues like low confidence, low motivation, or just not having anybody to go with, or, or not having access to good, uh, accessible information that lets you know what's going on in your community. We also found there was a total desire for people to get out um, and about in the evenings. So this is a picture of my life. This is my friendship circle. At the, at the center is me, and in my close circle is my family. And then I've got the next circle is my, my close friends, people who I go to at times of joy or sorrow and share those times with. And then I've got my shared interests. So those might be people who I play sport with or play music with. And then I've got the people who are paid to be in my life. So that's obviously my hairdresser, and it might be people like my plumber. And then there's the people on the outskirts, the people I see every morning on the way to work who I nod and say morning to, who I've no idea what they're called. Now this next picture is a typical picture of what somebody's life with a learning, with an intellectual disability looks like. Those middle circles are often missing. They 
have few people in their life who aren't paid to be there. And what Gig Buddies is about is trying to fill those circles to enable people to develop friendships and informal support networks in the process. So here's a few facts and, and um, figures about the project. We now have around, we've been going for about five years, we've now got around about 100 pairs of buddies. And some key statistics we've found out is that now 90% of the people that we work with say they feel less lonely through our work. And 78% have said they've found new friends and the confidence to find new friends outside of our project as a result of our work. And also the majority of our volunteers said they didn't know anybody with a learning disability or an intellectual disability before getting involved in the project. So it's having some really great results. And our buddies go to a broad range of gigs from small open mic nights in, in bars through to massive festivals like Glastonbury, and as a charity, we work with anyone over the age of 18, and there's no, there's no top limit. Just going to share you uh, three very short stories. So, in the top corner, you've got Tom and Pete. Tom now has developed the, the confidence to go and talk to people. Meet his, he's met his favourite stars at gigs, and he's now developed the, conversation, the, uh, the confidence to help us with our training and promotion of new volunteers. Christian, who's in the bottom left-hand corner, he dreamed of stewarding at a music festival. And there he is with his buddy Joe, stewarding at a music festival that um, happened locally to us in Sussex. And then there's David and Kitty. David dreamt of going to see Mount Vesuvius. That's what he really wanted to do. He asked his buddy, does she fancy going on holiday with him? So off they went to Naples. Um, and David also helps us in our office making videos and things like that. So we, we, um, we have ways of, of, of uh, enabling people to, to really um, use their skills and interests as well to support our work. On a national scale, this is a, a massive issue in the UK. Um, then research has shown that smoking and obesity aren't as great public health issues as loneliness. Loneliness is the, the biggest killer in, in the UK. And it was Mother Teresa who said loneliness and the feeling of, of being unloved is the greatest form of poverty. So what we're doing, we call it fun. It is fun, it's great fun. But we call it serious fun because underneath everything there's some really serious outcomes for people. And through our work, we're a tiny charity, we found a way of having some positive impacts on people's lives. And we've now found ourselves in the role of socially franchising this to other parts of the UK and the world. So we're working across the UK, in Australia, and hopefully Spain um, in the coming year. And we're always looking for like-minded people and organisations to work with us. So that's, that's us changing our community one gig at a time. Thank you very much. Thank you for these rather interesting stories about gigs. The next speaker is Klaus Kondusi. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard that this presentation was not planned. I know about, I know about it uh, since yesterday. But I hope also it hits the topic of this session not exactly. We can point out a clear relation to it. The IT-based solution I have the honor to present you now is aimed to find a special kind of partners for the daily life of people with disabilities. And so as well for travel, leisure time, concerts, gigs, or outdoor activities. Before I'm going to give you a glance to ABBA, a digital platform, to better match the need of people with learning difficulties and disabilities for assistance, 
and the offer of assistance, let me say a few words about the organization I'm representing. To make it short, we have drawn the Atempo story in three pictures. The first picture is saying that people are different. Someone can see, some others are not able to see, someone are walking, others are rolling, someone are tiny and others are tall, but all we think have the same desires. They want to have access to the offers of our society, which we have painted here as an opulent buffet, and you may see the dumplings as the learning system and uh, the cake as the sports facilities, if you want. The message we want to bring across is that we are sure that these people want to be part at one table and not on one table for the normal and the others for this is disabled in an extra table in an extra room for the blind people. And how this should work, that people can meet on um, an equal level. The third picture shows what's our job. We have to create the access, and the access has to be as individual as our people are. In this project, we want to try to open access to high quality assistance or support because we also see it as a prerequisite for inclusion. Let's, a look, let's have a look to the problem first. 15 to 20 percent of the European population has a disability, and roughly a third of them needs assistance for a self-determined life. They normally prefer to live at home, not in institutional services as long as possible. Hereby, they face three main challenges. Where should I search and how could I find the right assistant or assistant service to live independently at home? How can I manage all the problems around organizing my assistance? all the documentation and billing stuff, and how can I be protected against bad service quality or painful surprises with assistance. In the praxis, we know two models, the employer model and the service provider model. In the first case, the disabled person keeps control and self-determination, that's the advantage. But he or she takes the full responsibility, often for up to eight or nine assistants and all related tasks. And as a private person, he or she often has no professional option to search for assistance. And this, in many cases, leads to search, for instance, using Facebook without any privacy, not really a good alternative, we are sure. Service providers, on the other hand, often are agencies with limited office hours and poor flexibility. One is fully dependent on the agency, whether they find an adequate assistance. And normally, there is limited choice about which person the service would send to you. Needs beyond fixed dates, for example, the spontaneous idea to go to cinema or to a gig with a colleague from the UK on Saturday evening, don't even think about. We are sure digitalization here opens great opportunities and we want to create new and more comfortable solutions. And important to note at this moment, Atempo is not going to become a provider of assistance or support services. What we want to create is an open space with access for all three actors, people with disability, assistance or assistance services, and the independent living movement as a counseling resource as well, where people with disabilities themselves can decide with whom they want to get in contact and work together. AVA, which is in the prototypes 
stadium at the moment should be a marketplace for assistance. And what are the basic functions at that place? It's matching the persons via needs profiles on the one hand and offer profiles on the other hand, safeguarding privacy, self-determined selection, choice between the usage of the service model or the employer model. Secondly, organis the organizational service, a planning tool, a timetable with reminder function, chat and mailing functions, emergency service, documentation tool, billing solutions, and so on. And third, the function of quality control via a two-way feedback between users and assistants. So AVA is a tool for all parties, persons searching assistance and persons or services offering assistance. Let's have a look. You first create your profile. And at the beginning, you use an avatar and give you a nickname describing your needs and wishes, who and how your assistant should be, and what for you would need him or her for professional care at home, for assistance at your workplace, or if you just need the right person for your preferred leisure activities. And assistants, on the other hand, again, do their profiles in the same way, using an avatar. And as well, the service providers show the profiles of their assistant staff. These profiles we consider important to find the right chemistry between the actors, because this was the main point when we made an investigation about the needs of disabled people. They said, the main point is that I find familiar with my assistant, I like him. So as a person with assistance need, you get an overview about the offer of assistance in your region and you can make your choice. And yet, if you know each other through the profiles, you detect who you really are and get in contact. To sum up the benefit of this digital solution, it is about efficient matching of assistance offer and assistance needs. It's about transparency, the offer of assistance in your region. It's about more self-determination for people with assistant needs. It's about easy, quick, and flexible procurance of assistance services. It's about less administrative staff for all involved parties, and it's about 24 hours and seven days a week access to a broad pool of assistance offers. So all in all, and most important, more self-determination for people with learning difficulties and disabilities throughout a proper usage of state-of-the-art IT solutions. That's what we just are creating and then want to transfer and scale to other regions. We will start in Hamburg and Austria at this year in autumn. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. This was really a broad introduction. And we have learned that we have gigs, we have bodies, we have assistants. All is about building up friendships, close friendships to people who, what we have learned, many of them are isolated, many of them are lonely, many of them don't have good connections to the neighbors. So I think all these attempts are of utmost importance to improve the life situations of these persons. So I think now we should try to discuss that together and you should have the chance to ask questions to the two speakers, for instance. Who wants to start? You. I am Antonio Martinez from Spain. 
I have two questions to Paul. The first one is, uh, do you train your volunteers to hunt? Because if somebody doesn't had, hasn't had any contact with persons with intellectual disabilities, maybe you need some training before you start doing this volunteering. And the second one is, uh, what is the, how is your project financed? Because I think that some costs uh, there are, maybe not much, but uh, there are some costs of training, of the infrastructure, I, I don't know. Even. Yeah. The financial aspect. Thanks, Ed, Tony. Um, yeah, so um, with, with regards to training, yes, we do. We train all of our um, volunteers, and that training covers things like an introduction to working with people with learning disabilities and autism, around communication, um, we look at the, the issues around safeguarding, um, but we also look at things like uh, what to do if, what if somebody gets drunk, what if somebody goes missing, what if they have a seizure, you know, and making sure that people are, are really equipped. But we also give them ongoing support as well if issues arise. Um, in terms of the finance, um, we're funded partly by grants and trusts in, in the UK. Um, and so from the big lottery, um, but we also get some funding from local government as well because they they can see the benefit for it's 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 a cheaper way of, um, of providing a, a societal need. Um, so yeah, a mixture of ways. Yeah, but you're right. There are there are costs associated with it. Yeah. Another question. Thank you. I'm Cher from Australia. I'm very interested in what you said about Australia, because I didn't know either of those two things. Um, my question is also around money, because one of the uh, things um, that I'm pondering is, is it an unpaid or a paid position for the, uh, the last person that spoke when they're looking for what assistance they want? Is there a way of that person determining whether that's a paid relationship if they're giving them assistance in ways that normally a paid worker would be giving or not. And I guess the other question is around, if you're going to concerts and gigs, is, is there a, um, a share? Do you just pay for yourself? Or, uh, um, because I know in Australia what happens is that you get like a, a special pass that you get a support person to go with you. And I, um, there is often a lot of corruption of that, whereas people are just going to get a free, a free time to the pictures rather than be a buddy or a friend. I think first you, and then you. <clears throat> okay, as I said, we won't provide the service with our organization, ourselves. So what the platform, is doing the matching of persons who need assistance or support for their daily life or leisure time and the persons who want to bring it in. Um, the mechanisms are the same if it's a professional support or it's a volunteer support. Every time it's the same question. As I said, the chemistry, the needs and the offers should really fit very well together. So the platform can serve both systems, the paid system, the professional system, and the voluntary system. Okay, and uh, yeah, thank you. So with the, with the, the tickets, it's, um, there's, there's various ways of answering that. Um, so yeah, you're quite right. In a lot of uh, venues will give people a, a free uh, ticket uh, for somebody who is their personal assistant. So where possible, we might make uh, use of that. But also, we've, we've built up a relationship with promoters and venues where we work. So we get quite a few offers of, of free tickets as well. Mm -hmm. um, we do cover uh, volunteers' expenses. So we would expect the person with the disability to pay for their own ticket. But we do cover the volunteers' expenses up to a level of 10 pounds because we're not made of 
money and they, you know, we have to, otherwise people would say, oh yeah, uh, Beyonce's in town and we all want to go and we'd be bankrupt. So uh, we keep it realistic, but quite a lot of the volunteers also say, well, I wanted to go to that gig anyway, so it's their way of gig giving. So there's, there's a whole different way of, you know, a range of different ways that that, that plays out. May I add something? Mm. I don't re remember the name, but there is an internet platform I just uh, found by uh, surfing the, the web where people uh, use uh, these free tickets for establishing a new market. They would say, okay, if you want to go to hear the stones, normally you pay, I don't know, 100 euro. Mm -hmm. If you go as an assistant, you get it for 30. So they are making a business out of the free tickets. <laughs> Well, there's another person who has a question. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Ozan, I'm from Turkey. My question is for Paul Richards. Uh, I want to know how uh, do you convince parents to s let their children go out with their buddies? Because sometimes uh, they can be too protective for their children with uh, intellectual disabilities. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's a good question and it's something that we've worked quite hard at because there's a, a, a perception um, in the UK that, that gigs can be dangerous places or festivals can be. In reality, that's, that's not our experience, but we can understand why people think that, or maybe just walking down a street late at night afterwards and things like that. So we've just done a lot of work um, reassuring parents and, and carers um, that uh, we've thought these things through, that we, we ensure that volunteers are trained to think about um, safe ways of getting home or, and how to deal with any potential incident that, that, that might pop up as well. So we've, we've just done a lot of work to, to show we are thinking about that and we, we will react if there is some sort of safeguarding issue. But actually, what has happened is we've found that our volunteers have, have said... I'm not too sure about um, the, the support that someone, that my buddy's getting. So it's actually had the, 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 the added benefit of flagging up potential safeguarding issues where there's some um, concerns about the support people are getting as well. So it's actually making them safer in that sense. Thank you. This lady. and they register and they say I want to go to that gig and I could accompany someone or could you explain a, on a, in a concrete example maybe? Yeah, so somebody would come to us and say um, uh, I'm Paul, I love punk music, I want a buddy who has punk music. So, so we'll, we'll have a, a whole list of uh, potential volunteers. Kate will go through those, perhaps with a colleague, try and find a a likely person, and then they'll get to meet at a matching meeting. And we are always aware that people might look like they're uh, a perfect match on paper. Um, they, they might both be males, similar age, into punk, live in the same town. But when they meet, they might just not like each other. So it's, it's all about the, the human aspect of things. and. Um, and, and then supporting that ongoing r relationship. So that's sort of, in a nutshell, how the matching, how the matching works. And then it's important, it's about a one-to-one -one ongoing relationship. So we don't match people for specific gigs. It's about having an ongoing friendship. Another question at the backside. Mm -hmm. My name is Robin, uh, Robin Treisman from Jerusalem. Um, my question is, how should I put it? Um, both, both of you presented some, some very, very nice and rewarding platforms. And uh, if we take it to another step where it's a little bit less sexy, and instead of talking about gigs and even assistance for young adults, 
How about if we transfer this to the elderly? Have you done research on doing something similar for elderly people instead of taking them to a punk rock gig, um, joining people up to be able to go to a concert or a movie or something along those lines, or even finding proper assistance uh, for the elderly. Have you checked that out, and have you seen that it exists, that it doesn't exist? That's, we've, my, that's my question. We've been approached by quite a lot of organizations who are interested, who are looking at, so as a charity, we are specifically set up to work with people with intellectual disabilities and autism, and or autism. But there's absolutely no reason why uh, you couldn't use this model for older people, for people with acquired brain injuries, people with mental health issues, refugees, any marginalised group who find it difficult to be part of their community, it would, it would work. Uh, it would just need a bit of tweaking. But um, yeah, and we'd be totally up for, because we'd be really excited to look at the possibilities of, of that as well. Um, yeah. Thank you. Our time is limited unfortunately. Well, what I want to mention is we have some good examples in Berlin, in Germany. I think about 10 years ago, the majority, the big majority of persons with intellectual disabilities were living in institutions and big group homes. We tried to change that and the last figures are that 2,400 persons with intellectual disabilities live now included in the midst of the city, in small flats, etc., etc. So this was a big success, but now we found out that many of them feel isolated still because there are no connections to the neighbors. We have to find some solutions to build it up. Well, and these events and these music events, for instance, are really spreading now because these people themselves try to get the right information to have fun together with others. So they really can inform the neighbors, oh, there's something going on here and there. Should we do that together? And I think this structure, the gig structure, is a very good example for doing that. It must be something very attractive. If things are attractive, we find volunteers. Mm -hmm. And what I know is most of these volunteers don't expect any kind of payment or anything like that. They want to have fun together. They want to have leisure time together with all these people. So I think this was a very important input we got from gigs, from assistants, from how to find these assistants, peers and buddies. And we should all together go on to succeed with that. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.